The figures of the many outweigh the bills of the few. Here's your look at the Playmates Toys classic Star Trek, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Captain Spock. Seeking vengeance on James T. Kirk, superhuman tyrant Khan hijacks a starship, steals the Genesis device, and sets a deadly trap for the crew of the Enterprise. For those that have been searching for Spock, you don't have to search any longer, as we're going to be having a look at the figure right now. Thanks to the folks over at Playmates Toys that did provide this sample of the Wrath of Khan Captain Spock that we can have a look at in this video. Bringing in the tape measure now, we're going to measure it right to the very top of Spock's head start things first with inches. The figure in this case stands about four and a half inches in height, or the figure is going to be roughly about ten and a half centimeters tall. Seeing as he has been and always shall be his friend, we're going to actually slide over Captain Spock right now to free up a little bit of space to bring in the dear Admiral Kirk. Admiral Kirk. And while it may look like they're actually sharing the same legs to one another and same footwear, you actually, when you put them side to side, or in this case back to back, you can see that Spock is a little slimmer than Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk's been snacking on the side. Admiral Kirk, there, I'm going and doing it again. Yeah, it looks like they are using different bodies, different torsos, which would make sense as well because the way that the ranking is on Admiral Kirk, it won't be present here on Spock's costume. The accessories for Captain Kirk, the figure comes included with an engineering tool. That's all they call it. The engineering tool, I think he looks at from the front, as this seems to be a visor. There's no knobs on it necessarily, nor are there sticker applications, but this can at least be fit in his hand. Now, one hand already is for live long and prosper. Of course, that's a very trademark thing for Spock to do, but you can at least take the engineering tool somewhat and fit it into Spock's hands. I had it fine at the beginning of this video. Now, of course, it doesn't want doesn't to agree with me. There we go. Okay. You can see that it does hold in his hand, if that's the correct way, at least, that he's going to be holding it. The figure also comes included uh, with a Starfleet tricorder. A little bit different of a tricorder than what we've gotten before, at least from the classic series. This looks less like a man purse, and actually more like a, like a tracking device, or even a remote control. You can see there's a screen. You can see there's knobs. There isn't any color, unfortunately. It's molded in the same gray plastic as not only the engineering tool, but one other thing that also comes included with the figure, which I'm kind of actually surprised I didn't start this review with. Wide stance Spock. I'm going to look at the display stand. Display stand, once again, is that arrow-shaped pointed stand, the logo, of course, of Starfleet. There isn't any of the rectangular shapes behind it, something that would be closer to the costume of what we get with these characters, but still, at least you get the one singular peg, and that's going to attach to the underside of Spock's feet. He does have two holes, so choose wisely as to which one you would want to go with. And again, you just attach it onto... Now, again, because the peg is this far into the display stand, you have to kind of keep the legs pretty close together when it comes to displaying these figures. The last thing he comes included with as well is some oven mitts. Even They're not really oven mitts, but they are radiation gloves. The figure comes included with a couple of radiation gloves. Well, more so a pair. And while I did initially think that this would be something that you would pop off the existing hands to Spock, in fact, they're softer plastic. Squishy, squishy. So you can actually slide them over top of his existing hands. Simply just take those gloves. And you want to make sure, of course, obviously, that the gloves are facing the right way. The one that has the pointed finger is obviously going to go on this side. The one that has the just the relaxed hand, for obvious reasons, is also lining up to the thumb. But that's going to fit over the live long and prosper hand. There's a slit in the middle, so it's very easy, in fact, to actually fit this over his hands. While I'm actually fitting this over his hands, I'm going to tell you a quick story. And this actually did actually happen. I was over at my friend's house. He was cooking something in the oven. It may have been a cookie or may have been even a cake. And he could tell right away it was starting to burn. He ran into the kitchen. He put on mitts similar to the ones that we're putting on right now for Spock. And I quickly grabbed him and I held him back. And he says, the cookies are going to... Oh, yeah, that's what it was. It was cookies. He says, they're going to burn. And I said, they're burnt already. Nobody in that room got exactly the reference I was talking about. I thought it was witty. The cookies were still burnt no matter what. But I was able to slip in a reference for Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. They're burnt already. 
Anyways, while I was doing that, spinning a yarn of my older days, hilarity did not ensue. As you can see, I've already taken the liberty of adding on the gloves. Now, the gloves are a little on the more larger side, but at least they do fit over his existing hands, so you don't have to worry about popping off those hands and replacing them with the gloves. Like in the movie, you can see there's a little bit of silver there on the on the ends of the gloves. Big giant. It actually kind of looks like one of those foam hands you see at a sporting event. I'll go ahead and I'll remove these, and we will put those to the side. I thought that was funny. They're burnt already. He didn't, because of course... Whatever he was cooking, it probably was cookies. They were already burnt. Bringing in, though, Admiral Kirk, I want to show you guys the difference between the two characters. What's rather interesting is if you look at the emblem, the main comm badge that they have on the side, it's not really technically a communicator badge. It's actually just more a Starfleet badge. You can see, though, on Admirals, it seems larger. I don't even think it's just the case where they actually have painted it more. It seems, notably, notably that Captain Spock's is a little bit smaller. One thing that's also missing, too, because he is a captain, he doesn't have the additional gold line that runs across the costuming like Captain well, Admiral Kirk would have had. Something also that does change when we had looked at Admiral Kirk. I was curious that when we eventually would look at Spock, if the little badge, the little thing on the strap here would have actually been different. And sure enough, it is. So we have Admiral for Kirk, and then we have, I'm guessing, Captain for Spock. Something also that does get changed between the two is it looks like you can see the, the bands on the side of their arm has been changed as well. It's likely what they've done is they've kept the top of the shoulder still intact. So those, those molds are shared between the two. And then they would have just redesigned a lower strap for the part on the, on the sleeve. So it would be different from Admiral Kirk's to what we get here with Spock. Uh, yeah, again, I'm a surprise. I mean, obviously, his costume is a little bit more tapered off. They don't have to let out some space for Captain for Admiral Kirk. But I'm surprised, again, like the emblem is smaller on Kirk, on Spock than it was on Kirk's. Uh, head sculpt-wise, I think both of them are actually really good. I did mention when we had a look at the Admiral that his face seemed a little more on the softer side. The features didn't seem as sharp. Uh, Spock, on the other hand, I think actually his features stand out just a little bit more. And, of course, like in the movie, his skin complexion is a little bit on the lighter side, too. They didn't use, obviously, the same coloring of plastic between both Kirk and Spock. Spock's seems a little bit slightly more yellowish in color. Uh, looks like when it comes to the legs, the legs are exactly the same. The thighs, the lower calves, and the boots seem to be shared between the two figures. Moving Kirk out of the way here. Yeah, it's nicely, overall, it's a nice looking Spock. One thing also, too, is that this, this figure does have a live, live long and prosper sign. So if you know he's inside the other room, you can have you can have actually uh, Kirk on this side. Yeah, poor sad story. I know it was the first time I actually saw the Wrath of Khan. I wasn't expecting to see that scene. Funny enough, we didn't have the internet back then, so having things spoiled for you never happened yet. But I do like the idea that they gave him a live long and prosper hand. I mean, really, if you were to have the hands just straight like this, it does seem a little odd that he would have a live long and prosper hand all the time. I mean, they could have probably given you a swappable hand, for example. But overall, I just really like the look of Spock here. Articulation for the figure is exactly the same for the Admiral Kirk. Head rotates all the way around. It's on a ball joint. Head does look down, looks up, and also rocks back and forth as well. The shoulders are on a joint, so you can actually hinge those outward. You can take the arms and rotate them also all the way around. And while they only seem to have just a single hinge joint on the elbow, at least that hinge joint also allows the forearm to rotate all the way around. The hands as well rotate too. There is no waist swivel, but the lower skirting of their costuming, their uniform actually is soft enough, at least that you can actually do a leg splits here for Spock. I don't think normally he would be doing that with Spock, but still you can do that with the figure. The legs go forward, they also go back. There's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh. As well, there's a single hinge in the knee that allows the lower leg to rotate back and forth. There is also articulation here in the ankle, and you can move the ankle up and down also. We have three figures, in fact, from Wrath of Khan. I know right now we've only looked, only looked at Captain Spock, and we've looked at Admiral Kirk, who I could keep continuing to call Captain Kirk. But one other figure that Playmates did release for this first wave is Khan. Super excited to have a look at Khan. And I do think like both of these figures turned out really good. Yes, the accessories could have used a little bit of an additional sticker application, but at least you do get yourself the oven mitts, ever crucial for, of course, for Spock to be saving the day and for running towards the oven and trying to save the burnt cookies. They're burnt already. 
nobody got the reference. But once again, I am really excited to see where the future he future is held when it comes to future releases of these new Star Trek figures. So far from what I've seen between The Next Generation and now tying into the Wrath of Khan movie-verse, I'm really happy to see that Playmates are releasing these Star Trek figures. Small in size, pretty still good in detail, and tons of accessories, like I said, that come include with both of them so far. Now that we've wrapped up the review for Captain Spock, I think I'm done with the idea of mixing up the characters' names. Even when looking at the accessories at the beginning for Captain Spock, I may have even called him Captain Kirk. And how many times have I instead called him Captain Kirk instead of the Dear Admiral? Either way, though, Captain Spock looks quite good with oven mitts in his hands, on his hands, a nice accessory to becoming included with the figure. For a character that, of course, does die, I'm hoping I'm not spoiling that for anybody that hasn't seen a 30-plus movie. How long ago was Wrath of Khan? Well into the 80s. It's been a while. It's been a while. If you haven't had the chance yet to see it, I'm sorry. But the things don't go so well for Spock, but he does save the day in the end. I'm glad to see that they at least included the radiation gloves, as that's likely the way I'm going to be displaying the figure on the shelf. As for the rest of the accessories, while well, yes, he does come include with a tricorder, he does, yes, inc include the engineering tool. I think for me, the go-to are the oven mitts, which again only reminds me of how witty I thought I was back then by holding my friend back, running into the kitchen. They're burnt already. I mean, now that I think about it, I mean, sp he's dead already. It has nothing really to do with they're burnt already. I may have thought the reference was a little bit more solid than maybe anybody that I would have had to have explained it to afterwards. Any of them, I'm sure, would have been thinking, why is this jerk holding back the guy who's just trying to save our, our snacks? And meanwhile, I thought I was being witty by throwing in there a sci-fi movie reference. And again, nobody got it at all. What do you guys think of Captain Spock? Let me know down below in the comments section. And once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Playmates Toys that did provide the sample of the Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, Captain Spock. Of course, the review of uh, Khan, Khan Noonien Singh, to be exact, his review will be right around the corner. So if you guys are certainly hoping to see my feelings when it comes to Khan, make sure you stick around to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you love the content you're seeing and do, yeah, want to stick around for the rest of the Star Trek reviews, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.